Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And the situation, of course, today that unfolded in the Capitol just is unbelievable. Uh, but now let me just clarify, though. I can believe that the agitators that uh, stormed the Capitol, uh, they, it just doesn't appear to be like that of normal pro-Trump supporters. Uh, and in fact, there was an article uh, that, that, uh, that we picked up on. Let me see if I can find that right. Well, here we go right here. Facial recognition. We'll kind of pause this because there's all kinds of language that goes off in the background of that. Uh, firm claims Antifa infiltrated Trump's protesters who stormed the Capitol. Uh, said retired military officer told the Washington Times that the firm XR Vision used its software to do a facial recognition of protesters and match two Philadelphia Antifa members uh, to two men inside the Senate. The source provided the photo matches to the Times. Uh, one uh, has a tattoo that indicates he is a Stalinist sympathizer. Antifa promotes anarchy through violence and wants the end of America in favor of a Stalinist state. So, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, when I first began to report on it, I was kind of shocked that this was happening. But then I began to look at the video footage uh, that was also surfacing on Twitter. You see things like this right here, some of the images there, these young guys and stuff. Not typical Trump supporters, uh, which are not normally a bunch of young guys that are, that are going around like a bunch of thugs. And I thought, that's just like what we've seen uh, even in the Black Lives Matter marches, uh, you were seeing Antifa uh, violent members there that even infiltrated them because there, there was many times I took up for the Black Lives Matter, the people that were that felt disenfranchised, they felt like they had been, uh, you know, things that had been wrongfully done, and they were trying to protest peacefully. Uh, and then there was a lot of uh, people that were coming into those protests trying to intentionally incite violence uh, to create more havoc. And, uh, you know, of course, once you get it going, then then more people join into it. And the next thing you know, they're burning down the entire nation uh, during these issues over uh, the death of different people that have been uh, killed uh, by police actions, things like that. Well, I, this is exactly what I believe was happening in Washington, D.C. today. And, uh, and of course, they did storm uh, the Capitol building while they were in session trying to certify Joe Biden as the next president of the United States and Kamala Harris as his vice president. And, uh, and, and of course, they really lashed out on Trump. But, but, you know, at the same time, though, I can't help but wonder if this is not nothing but a setup from the beginning. And when I say that, because I, as I watch the things unfold, they want unrest. They want to bring about civil unrest throughout the nation. And even some of these detractors, you have like George Bush and Biden and all them saying this was a tragedy, especially Mitt Romney. They come out and they're bashing on Trump. Well, I think Trump knows full well what it's about. I think Mitt Romney knows as well, as well as George H.W. Bush, uh, that this is all about to bring this nation to a boil so they can disarm the nation. They want the people to go against one another. And, and they're going to probably end up being successful. Uh, I would not be a bit surprised. There we go right there. Former Republican President George H.W. Bush, excuse me, George W. Bush, not H., condemned the rioting at the Capitol and said he was appalled by the reckless behavior of some political leaders since the election. Ah, what do you know? So... Let's watch, though. Next week is going to be a very interesting week. I, I told you guys that this would not be the time when anything would happen. I know a lot of people felt like oh, it's going to be where they're going to be able to overturn the election and get it back, give it back to Trump and stuff. And I said, nope, it's not going to be what's going to happen. Watch what happens next week. Now, I don't say that Trump's going to become president as a result, but they're going to really stir it up come next week. And things that are going to come out will shock you, I promise you. Uh, you know, they I say that Trump puts out these subliminal messages. Even in these, there are subliminal messages. Let me see if I can get it. Play it here. Listen into this here for a second. Here we go. There it is.
You hear that? Think of that as a subliminal message, what he just accused certain individuals of there. I think you're going to see a very interesting week, uh, to say the very least there. By the way, also, I saw this in an Arabic news. I reached out to a good friend of mine uh, from the Middle East there, Ahmadinejad, in an urgent message to Rouhani, prevent a war that will soon take place in the region. Uh, the former Iranian president, Mohammad Ahmadinejad, uh, was making an appeal to, to Rouhani, who is the current president there, saying to do everything he possibly could to avert a war, that it's only going to serve the interest of those that are trying to get the war started, which it's Israel that's trying to get this war started. And, uh, and it's not, and of course, the people of Iran will end up paying the price for that. Uh, the interesting thing that I got back, though, is that his thinking that the war is going to begin or imminent, which I believe uh, to some extent it is imminent, is that he's basing that more on media and not on real intel that's going on. Uh, but at the same token, this is one reason why I think you're going to see a lot of crazy things happen next week. Israel wants this war with Iran. doesn't matter how they seem to get it. They want that war with Iran. And speaking of the war with Iran, another big issue that I saw as well, and I'll kind of jump over here to Syria real quick, uh, Israel also was launching attacks, uh, again, against uh, south of Damascus there, hitting Iranian-backed uh, targets over there. I think what Israel is looking for is they're looking for those ballistic missiles that have been moved into the region there, both Syria, Lebanon, uh, also in Yemen and, and other places like that. And Israel is trying to weaken up some of those places there. How much longer will this go on, though, before Iran actually snaps and makes a mistake? And uh, I say makes a mistake because once Iran strikes back, especially if they go to hit Israel, it's going to be game on and it's not going to be a pretty picture. And then the president of the United States will join in in that type of a battle. But I know there's a lot of political uncertainty as far as Biden. This is one reason why uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff have said for the president to stand down, not to get involved uh, right now with a war because of not knowing for sure who's going to be in the White House come January the 20th. I can't even say for sure. Uh, it's so crazy. Uh, uh, things that are going on. So uh, we just wanted to share those things with you, uh, update you about things that are that are happening like this there, and uh, bring some of these things uh, to to your your attention there. I, I'm gonna put, I wanted to put this title of this article up for you here. Uh, this is uh, Stacey Abram refutes uh, comparison of Trump. Wait, that's not that one. That's not the one I wanted. Hang on. Uh, here we go. This one right here. Back in January of this year, here we are coming up on the one-year anniversary. Stacey Abrams predicts she will one day be president. The former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams predicted that she will be elected president of the United States in the next 20 years. Uh, I just would tell you, keep your eyes closely on this woman right here. And I have been told that Hillary would look like a saint compared to if this woman became president. But watch closely what happens. You know, I shared with you a little while back what was going to happen in 2024, or at least what I was what was told to me that would happen in 2024. And uh, there's a lot of credentials there. And she seems to be rising to stardom very quickly. So I would keep a close eye on her as far as how things go there. Uh, but anyway, uh, listen, crazy things are going on. Pray for the people of the nation here. Pray for the people in the Middle East. Uh, and, and, and listen, don't get involved in this violence. Today, a lady lost her life, a veteran of the United States Air Force, in the Capitol that came in as well. She got shot and uh, and died. And that is a tragedy, a tragedy for her family. Uh, somebody that uh, I believe was a real Trump supporter, but uh, I don't think she was in there. She wasn't doing anything violent, didn't have any weapons or anything like that, but got in, got in, got in the middle of something there and she ended up losing her life, a very tragic situation. 
And this is exactly, even John Moore was trying to warn. He didn't, you know, he didn't think like this is going to turn out to be a good thing to begin with. I know people are trying to support the president because of the election fraud, things like that. But still, this is uh, because of these Antifa agitators that have gotten in the middle of all this, it has really put a stain uh, on, uh, on, on America. And, and I can tell you something, friends. We're going to see China is going to come against this country. But you know what's interesting? I have a feeling the way China is going to come in, kind of like my uncle. My uncle, uh, he used to work with the FBI. And he, he made a statement to me not long ago that what will happen is this nation will go into civil unrest or insurrection and that the violence will become so bad and then the left will gain control they'll gain power in the united states uh, and that what they will do is they'll end up calling in china to actually come in as united nations peacekeepers and he said they'll appear as if they're coming in peacefully but they're really coming in to thin out the americans here uh, to take over this nation to bring this nation under communism and so we'll end up looking like terrorists trying to stop all of this. But at the same time, uh, the left will think, well, the Chinese are here to save the day. And I just can't help but wonder if that's not going to be the face there that helps call them in. I was told 2024 we would see war with China. But will they come in like my uncle said, They're actually coming in as if they are peacekeepers? But in reality, they will finish disarming the nation or at least attempting to anyway. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good afternoon.